Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to another Friday morning model cars and coffee. That's almost empty, so when this is over, I gotta go get some more. So anyway, uh, first up here before we get to the cars, I want to probably move the phone twice in this video because I want to show you something real quick at the beginning and then we're going to look at some pictures like we usually do at the end. So I'm going to move it down after this to, so we can look at the models and then back up for the picture. But first off, uh, my last video, I got a comment in my comments uh, from a gentleman. And I, you know, I always read all my comments and I look at the names. And, and some guy named Tom Peterson commented on my video and he mentioned how, you know, you know there's a... There's another old geezer out there, old fart, whatever we call this, building models, and how he's getting some, some models out and kind of getting back into it, and uh, talking about how you know the, our hobby's kind of being accepted more in the, in the real car world, people, and, you know, just you know just some just some random stuff, and I kept thinking, man, that, Tom Peterson, that's a, I recognize that name, but you know, it's. It's not who I think it is. Uh, I don't know if anybody, you guys uh, know who Tom Peterson is, the auto artist, uh, airbrush and uh, stuff like that, uh, paintings and stuff. But I'm thinking, oh, that can't be him. Well, I got to the end of the article, and it's like he knew what I was thinking. He's like, he says something like, uh, yeah, I'm the Tom Peterson that's an artist, and so my work has been in uh, Street Rotter and stuff. And I'm like, damn, that's just unreal. Uh, that, that you know, he's uh, subscribing to my channel and watching my videos, and uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, we talked back and forth a little bit, but uh, Tom Peterson, I've watched his work for a long, long time. Amazing. If any of you haven't seen. Uh, what he's done in the past, and the guy's into all kinds of stuff. You, you need to go, you can Google him or you can go on YouTube and just uh, type in Tom Peterson Auto Art. Again, I apologize for not being able to link things. I really got to work on that. Uh, my son helped me with that too, I guess. But uh, just Tom Peterson Auto Art, and it pops right up on YouTube. And if you Google him, uh, you can find a video, and he talks kind of about his life. Uh, his health isn't all that great right now, but he's plugging away, and he's still doing tons of stuff. Uh, he scans old car magazines and uh, emails them to people, and you can get on the list. So he sent me a sample of one of his old uh, pocket-sized car craft that he scans and uh, sent it to me, and I'm like, yeah, count me in. So once a week... When his health is up for it, he sends them out to people, so which is, which is really cool. But we, we had a nice little conversation. Uh, he's a, he's a neat guy. Uh, I hope his health gets better. I hope he hangs in there. But uh, I was just really uh, shocked and uh, I don't know honored or or whatever you want to call it that uh, someone of that uh, of that. Uh, magnitude or someone of that uh, talent or whatever is watching my videos i'm sure he's watching a lot of you guys out there he's subscribed to a lot of uh model car channels out there and some of you guys might uh, already know about him and have him subscribed to your channel too and have talked to him but i thought it was pretty cool him tom peterson and dave bell are uh, my two favorite artists that i've admired their work for years and years and Dave Bell I don't know if anybody uh, recognized his name but he used to draw all the pictures in the back of Street Rotter magazine uh, this kind of stuff and what I do because I love his work so much is I uh, I went through tons of Street Rotter magazines all the ones I had it must have been a couple hundred of them and I cut out uh, all his artwork in the back and some of his smaller stuff he does for beginning of columns and then I take them and print them off over at the store and then I bring them home and me and my wife sit at night a lot 
we used to do it a lot more in color while we're watching TV. So I've been coloring a lot of his pictures that he draws in the back of Street Rider. So that's one there I did. I've got a, probably a, close to a hundred or more of them that I've done over the years. Last, I don't know, four or five years. But they're really fun to color. So they're watching TV, another good way to relax. But that's his artwork there. I tried to find some of of Tom Peterson's and I couldn't find any. I got some, but it's just, I got, just got stuff everywhere and had to put some stuff away. So you just, uh, just Google him guys and, and you can subscribe to his channel and check out his stuff and kind of keep up with him. But anyway, uh, it, it's pretty cool. I just wanted to share that with you guys. So first up here. Oh, oh, and he, uh, he, you know, he asked about some, some, uh, tips on his modeling and he was talking about opening doors and, and getting a nice cut on on the door opening and I you know and, and hinges and I'm not too good at doing how to things yet the way my camera's set up I don't I have to get weird angles to see if I'm on camera or not so if, if any of you guys have some good videos on making the hinges and if you subscribe to his channel already or you could you could maybe shoot him a video on it but he was talking about uh, uh scribing the doors open and, and the way i do it i th i just thought i'd show you guys real quick i'm sure about 99.9 percent .9 of you probably do it this way but you know they got the saws and they got the heat knives and all these ways but i just take the number 11 exacto blade the back edge stick it in the door line and just start scribing away and then you can see all the plastic coming out there and the deeper it gets the harder you can push because it won't come out of the out of the scribe line because it's deep if you go too hard at the beginning you'll pfft, and then you got a nice scratch it takes longer it's kind of time consuming but you get a super nice cut nice and straight nice uh, thin line there so anyway that's how I do that and I just think some of you other guys uh, might be interested in that also and then the hinge thing hopefully somebody can help me out with that I will try and do one eventually uh, there's a lot of different hinge ideas out there I've learned of a few new ones too since I've been on YouTube so anyway uh, I just want to thank Tom for uh, for the comments and everything and the nice visit we had texting back and forth uh you know after uh his comment we were we were texting or we were commenting on uh on uh internet where where you call it anyway so anyway uh give him a shout give him a sub go check out his artwork if you haven't seen it before it is amazing so anyway, first up here, uh, shock, shock, a couple hot rods showed up. I guess we could leave the camera angle like this, and I'll just pick the car up and give you guys a look at it. Try spinning around. These are a couple uh, parts, kits, uh, cars that were in a box, missing parts and stuff that I found a few years ago and uh, put them together try to make a model out of it and make it look good this one I was real excited about because this is that old monogram uh, I got I got the box a box uh, 30 Ford I, is it the 30? I think it's the 30 Ford coupe monogram this didn't come with the original box I found an original box I had the original box for years and I finally found this is the closest I could afford to the real kit because it's crazy money. But uh, I put it together. I believe the motor came with it, but the headers didn't. Uh, wheels and tires obviously didn't. Interior, we, it's all it's black in there, so it's kind of hard to see, especially up here at this angle. Uh, chassis came with it. Really nice chassis. Uh, it's black, not a whole lot of detail to it. There we go, get some light on there. Just did a few little uh, highlights there. And the headers out of the parts box. 
and wheels and tires out of the parts box uh, put some pinstriping on it and some license plates and the club plaque up in the window threw some door handles on it and a mirror and I don't guess you can't get it not much in the interior you have to trust me on that black seats black door panels and the dash got a little gauge cluster in there this isn't working all that great because I got better light down low but if there's a whole lot of detail in there I'd switch it around but there there really isn't it it, it, it I wish I would have this turned out better than I thought it was going to uh, I put the 32 grill on it and grill shell I put some lights on it that I had in the parts box I believe those were parts box and the beehive oil filter thing I put that on there I believe more pin striping this here I put an insert up there uh, like I showed you guys before this styrene sheets that you get I wish they were a little bit tighter pleats maybe they might have some somewhere but that's what they had at our hobby shop I bought this a long time ago it's lasted me quite a while they got the diamond pattern too that I showed you but anyway I put that on the top there kind of give it a look so a really neat kit I'd love to find another one unbuilt or just another one period uh, that's reasonable but that will probably never happen because they're crazy money but I love those caps and rings on there with the black the black rod and everything and that's probably some Krylon flat uh, some kind of a green I'm sure it has a fancy name but but I had to put the tail lights on there and the door handle on there or the trunk handle and the door handles that's all parts box stuff it turned out way better than I thought it was going to. I had a window frame was chrome and it's from something I don't know, I can't remember what. It's out of the parts box to fit on there so it looks pretty good. Got a chip in the visor there so it kind of has that driven look. Anyway, there's that one. The next one is just the good old Monogram Revell 32 Ford 3 window. You've seen this one before when I did a quick little video on the white lightning paint and what it does over different colors uh, some of you guys were, were were doing that or were asking about it so I showed you I didn't really talk about the car that much I just had two or three models up there but this is red primer uh, the red the red primer that you get with the white lightning I don't know if they still make this one I haven't been in the hobby shop in quite a you know over a year or so but uh uh, my nephew bought me a few cans of this, so I'm kind of savoring it. But uh, you put this over other colors, like I told you in that video. You can go back and check it out, and you get a really cool color. Well, that's what you get with this. Really neat little, uh, kind of like the old Pacra paint, I think it was, called Metallic Heather. I think it was what it was called. I painted Roadrunner that color, and it's pretty close to it. Somebody else dig that out of the case. It's buried in there pretty pretty good up there but uh this is another one i was just tried that paint out and i'm like that oh, looks pretty good so i just kept plugging away at it and it turned out uh really good it's got the monogram tires and caps on it like what's in that uh kit i just showed you the uh well like the black widow has it and the green hornet has it has those type of wheels and caps but i just started doing this and you know i put a little pinstriping on there tail lights license plate and the club plaque again and uh but this was parts thing it was all in a parts box pretty much all apart a lot of the parts were there i had to put a few things in it uh chassis and, and then i had a few i've got tons of these kits i don't have a lot of extra parts from from this monogram kit because i usually build them and use all the parts but this had most of the parts with it Changed out the headers and everything. Did a little detail painting there. Got some color on there. White front and rear suspension. And I don't know if that's the engine block. I think it is that comes with the kit. I don't know. I can't. No, I don't know. Because I, I put the, the Hemi valve covers on there. The red ram thing. Whatever year that was. And that looks pretty cool. And those headers out of the parts box. They look 
good on there with the black and then this color uh, the carbs and the air cleaner that's from the uh, 53 yeah uh, 53 right amt uh ford pickup kit i love that setup that's just a badass looking carb setup put a little fuel uh no we're uh Brake and clutch cylinder, master cylinder things there. I think that's what that's supposed to be. This has got the beehive thing on it too. And if I know this is going to turn out this decent, I'd have done some more wiring and stuff on it. But I didn't think it would. And I didn't. I didn't have any small ones of the smooth. I forget what those are called. There's. I love that hubcap though. My brother's girlfriend had those on her sixty. Chevy Impala black on red. Oh god. And uh, I loved them ever since. I had those pretty close. Interiors, right? This is what came with the kit. And what I did is just took my felt pen, a fine point sharpie, and scry and just drew in the lines on the seat and around the door panel there. If you look real close, I kind of came out a little bit here and there. Did it on the dash also. Boy, when it's a light interior, you can see in there really good compared to the other one. Let's flip it around here. Uh, I think I put a 40 Ford steering wheel in there. See, this is why I can't do a how-to because I'm trying to look and show at this while I'm showing it and then make sure it's coming through on my camera, all right, because I don't I don't have that reverse thing or whatever in hell you call it. But anyway, I don't know how to get my phone to do it. I don't think it does anyway. But did I do anything? Yeah, I did up there. No. Well, look at that. What a bonehead. I didn't do the lines up there. Damn. Oh, well. Looks pretty good. Anyway, that turned out really good. That color is awesome. I didn't clear it or anything because I was kind of going for a kind of old school look. But I'm going to do this again eventually. I don't know what on. Maybe a custom or something and clear it. And polish the crap out of it, color sand and everything, because that's a really cool color. Got that moon decal on the tank and the front. Anyway, there's a chassis again. Anyway, a really cool build. I love that kit. I built a ton of them, as you guys know. And this turned out pretty good for an old parts uh, parts find. It's got the real bad mold lines, and I got most of them out there. Pretty, but it's, it's pretty goobered up in here. And again, I didn't think it was going to turn out that good, so I didn't really spend a lot of time on it. But that color, like I say, that color is pretty cool. Love that white lightning stuff. All right, we're getting way up there in time. But that's all right, because we didn't have one last week, so we got to make up for it. That's what Squirrely said anyway. So a shop card. Anybody wants a shop card? I got some. I reached out to a guy who's back from him yet. Uh, he only got one shop card. I don't know how long. I can't remember how long he's had his channel, but but uh, so I reached out. and I said, "Dude, you need another shop card and some some more shop cards." So I should have remembered who he was. But hopefully he reaches out. I'll send him one. And then I'll tell you all you guys send him one when I find out who he is. So let's look at some pictures real quick. Uh, I got some more just photos, and then we'll go back to that book. Remember the book a ways back. That I was looking at, and we still got some look to look at in that. It's really cool. But first up here, we got your little Mustang, which is pretty cool. Little street car guy standing there watching. Can't really tell what's in the background. And look at this, another Mustang. This must have been the Mustang film roll. Okay. Well, this is a, that's probably red, I would guess. So it's got some nice wheels on it there. That looks like a pretty nice little Mustang, man. Got the fancy thing in the grill. See that? See that? Is that like, did that like a special edition or something? Because there's nothing in that grill. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I'm just wasting time. Sorry. Nothing in the background. Too dark. Now it's too blurry. When I did it, whoa. Nice and slow. Find the sweet spot. There ain't a sweet spot. Sorry, there isn't a sweet spot. You got to talk professional when you're on camera. There we go. See how fancy my setup. I got to touch it to to have it clear up, and then it moves and jiggles. And but I don't care. We're having fun. 
Yeah, look at that. I might have seen that before from a different angle. A little 63 Plymouth. I can't tell if it's a Fury or a Sport Fury. It's like what my brother-in-law had. I built the model of. You guys seen? You guys seen it? Uh, I got it back from my uh, brother-in-law after he passed away. But he got to enjoy it for uh, almost a year. And he, I think I told you I mailed it to him so it would be a nice surprise. I mean, it lives up at Diamond Lake, but I thought it would be cool. I'm going to say that's probably like a light blue with a white top. This was dark blue. All right. I could just stare at these pictures all night. You know that? Hey, another Mustang. Not the same one, I don't believe. That's the first white one. No, it's not. That's got the little thing in the grill, too. I don't know. Maybe it's just something you can take out. I don't know. Let's see. They're not, not the same car. I'd say one's white, one's yellow. How's that sound? That looks like it's got a white interior in it, too. The other one did, too. Man. Got some wheels on it. What's he racing over there? A little is that a Ford Torino or something, maybe? I mean a Fairlane or something? I don't know. Nice shot though. Nice shot. Oh, look at this. Another this is a 64 Plymouth. Not to be confused with the 63 Plymouth. Tell by the side molding there and the headlights and the blinker lights and stuff. I have a model of this and a model of this. I think I showed you them. They're in the case. It's hard to get out. Someday I'll dig them out though and they'll show up for Friday. But that's like a major project getting them out of the case. But Millwood Racing, that's out in the valley. Now the city out there is not Spokane anymore. It's Spokane Valley. But uh, that's pretty cool. Love those wheels on the front. Very nice old school uh, I forget who made those and why my phone doesn't stay focused. Now it's got a wiggle. Huh? I'm sorry, guys. It's, we're on a low budget filming here. Anyway, all right, stare at that enough. Oh, look at this. We got ourselves a dragster just coming into the picture. So that turned out pretty good. I mean, he could have wound up with, you know, just that much of it. So. Burning them tires, man. All the way down the strip. Good old days. This guy not just sitting on the line waiting. The guy's got his ears plugged back there. Yeah, them suckers are loud. But they're so freaking cool. Man, I wonder where that sign went. That would look so cool. Anywhere in my house. Okay. Oh, check this guy out. He wears his sunglasses at night. Before the song was out, I'm sure. He just wants to make sure he sees the light, so he's got them pulled down a little bit. I don't know what kind of bike that is. Maybe a Triumph or something? Good looking bike, though. A lot of night pictures. Right, last one here. I don't know where this is at. That might be over on the coast somewhere, maybe. Have we seen this one? I might have seen this one before, too. Because all them cars in the back kind of ring a bell. We'll look at this first. Kind of looks like an old uh, sprint type car or something that they made into a dragster. Very cool. Well, let's pull this up here and let's see if we can jiggle the phone again. Make it clear. Look at all those cars. Man. And they're like a 40 Chevy and a 36 maybe Ford and then a, like a 50 Ford there. I don't know. It's fun to look at these and try and guess them all. I'll get my magnifying glass out when we're done here. I'm going to figure it out. Sorry, got to jiggle it again. We got to get a better shot of that. Anyway, I wish they'd have rolled on the back of some of these. Some of them do, but not, not very many. Anyway, again, all from Greg Fury. Damn, I forgot to write down the guy's name that took all the pictures. Because I post these on uh, my Facebook group, Deer Park Greg's Rip Memories, if you want to go check it out. And uh, Greg Fury knows everything. Uh, I think he's in his 80s. And his mind, I've told you before, is as sharp as a freaking tack. Sharper than a tack. More like a really high dollar knife. He knows cars. He knows people. He knows tracks. Amazing. So he's always commenting. Campbell, I think, is the guy's name. 
that, that took all these pictures and he just gave me tons of them. We've seen a lot of them. I've got a few more for next week. So anyway, got to say thank you, uh, Greg Fury, for that and for all the other cool stuff he's given me. He still drops by with a box every once in a while and gives me stuff and tells me to focus my phone. Okay, long video. I'm sorry, but hey, it is what it is. If you want to watch the whole thing, I appreciate it. If not, I understand. You can always have, watch the half and come back and watch the other half. But anyway, thanks again, guys, for the support. I appreciate it. Thanks for the subs. Uh, appreciate all the new guys subbing. I appreciate all the comments uh, from when I was down for a while and the welcome backs and everything. Uh, it means a lot, guys. Thank you very much. So with that, I'm out of here. Again, go uh, check out uh, Tom Peterson Auto Art. You'll recognize who he is when you see the pictures that he that he paints. And uh, Google Dave Bell, too, and you'll see some of his cool. He's passed away a few years ago. But uh, go check him out, too, and, and look at some of his stuff. Uh, he's got some intricate stuff like this that will just blow your mind if you haven't already seen it. Anyway, that's enough. I'm out of here. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.